And most of you won't be successful, not because you can't do it, but you can't outlast your old you long enough to get to your new new. Everything great in your life is on the other side of your greatest fears. It makes sense to get up and start your day early because you can get more work in. Rise and shine, it's Espresso time. What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan, I believe in you, and this channel is designed to be a part of your daily success routine. So let's start your day off right together. Grab your coffee and sip on today's message, fight. Over to you, Eric Thomas. Also, if you wanna know what Eric and other successful entrepreneurs have to say about building unstoppable confidence, check out my 254 Confidence series where every day, for the next 254 days, I will send you a morning video for free to help you build your confidence. The link to join is in the description below. Even if you're my closest friend, I have boundaries. Mm. When I've been telling you to get that goal, get that dream, and I've just been telling you drive it and drive it and drive it and drive it, what I've been talking about is consistency. Freshman year in college, uh, me and my boys start like this, like Christian, like organizations. I know many of you saw this game. They were down by 20. They were down by 20. That's pretty much down by 20 in Golden State? No. Down by 20 away. So, boom. Multiple businesses, right? So, but before this happened, if anybody's been studying him closely, what happened before this game happened? 77 three-pointers in a row. This boy made 77 three-point shots in practice. They were down by 20 points. He came back and won the game, but you might've missed it. Take him to the slide, see. Do you see it? He's shooting a three-pointer with his eyes closed. They showed it on Sports Center. The boy's eyes is closed with the three. Boom. Muscle memory. His eyes is closed. What was he thinking about? He was thinking about in practice. One, in practice. Two, 77. And he starts saying to himself, we down by three points. Three times seven is 21. Let me give him the business. One, defense. Two, defense. Guys, don't worry about it. Just give me the rock. You sure? Remember what I did in practice? Seconds left. He not even at home. He away from home. He got his eyes closed. Boo! With one of the best defenders checking him. You've been lazy your whole life, and now somebody told you you could make six figures, and you go knock on the door a hundred times, and your body say you a lie. You ain't never gave 100%. And in order to knock on the door 100 times, you're going to have to get 120. Get up out of here. You can't do this. And you're going to have to fight and fight and fight and fight. And most of you won't be successful, not because you can't do it, but you can't outlast your old you long enough to get to your new new. Yep, I'm leaving. I'm going to say it again. You can't get past your old you to get to your new you. Every time you dedicate yourself, this is my year, I'm going to make it happen. You don't make it happen. This kid didn't take his team to the most wins this year because of what he does in the game. I'm accounting for you. One defense, somebody tell me, I'm sorry, Davis. How tall is Davis? 16. 7 2 wingspan. He right there. I see somebody else look like a small forward. Got a small forward inside there, right there. I got another guy coming around right there. He got his eyes closed and he shoots over. This is your year. This is your year. This is your year. This is your moment. You saw your boy ET do it. This is your year. This is your moment. If not you, who? If not now, when? This is you, baby. Ain't nobody stopping you but you. Can't nobody stop you but you. You're not average. Stop acting like it. You're not average. Why you being average? You're not average. Why you being good when you're not good? You great. You phenomenal. When you gonna step up to the plate? You gonna let a high school drop out? Somebody that lived in abandoned buildings? Somebody ate out of trash? Outdo you? 
I couldn't hardly read when I got to college. You're going to let me outdo you? It's greater than that. You don't fight to be the new you because you don't believe that you could be that person. You'd love for it to happen. You'd love for those things up on your vision board to come true. But because you don't think you're capable of doing it, you don't put in the effort. Why put in all that work if it's not going to happen? The truth is there is a small piece of you that believes you can do it, but it's being suffocated by your fear. I look at my own case as an example. I'm about to go off and do something that's very scary for me. I'm doing a 90 day tour of the United States. We're hitting up 23 different cities in 90 days. And when I first did it, the tour alone is not scary for me. When I first announced it, my idea was I would go and do free coffee shop meetups. That's low risk. That's not scary because if nobody shows up, nobody shows up. It's great. No problem. If one person shows up, awesome. I'll have a great one-on-one -on -one conversation. If 50 people show up, then great. We've just packed the room. There's no risk. There's no fear. It's not scary. And I went to New York and my agent called me out on it. He said, Evan, you're thinking small. Evan, you're playing a small game because you're afraid of going off and taking a bigger shot because you're afraid that people are not going to show up if you did a paid event. And he was right. And so now I have to do it. Now I have to do paid events. I have to do it to eat the fear. And listen, maybe still nobody shows up. Maybe only one person shows up. Maybe zero. Maybe we booked the room. We booked the venue in each of these 23 cities. <laughs> and then nobody shows up or one person shows up. One is probably worse than nobody. At least with, with one, uh, at least with zero, I, I get to walk away. But with one person, I have to still go on and, and do my show. That's terrifying. That's terrifying for me. And then I have to repeat that nightmare every four days. You have one city, four days, another city, four days, another city, four days, another city for 90 days. It's going to be crazy. But because I'm afraid of it, I have to go off and do it. And because I love over delivering value, it's I'm going to bring the best of me to each of those cities. It's going to be a life changing experience for the people who come to the workshops, whether one person shows up or 100. I'm going to bring my best and it's going to be amazing, but I'm afraid to do it. And so I have to do it. And the younger version of Evan probably would have found a logical reason why not to do it. Well, I can't do it because I'm too busy. I can't do it because I don't want to put in the work to book all the speaking gigs. I can't do it because blah, 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 right? The logic, there's lots of logical reasons why I shouldn't do it. And you're tricking yourself with your logic. Your brain is getting in your way. Where really underneath the reasons is you're just afraid. You're just afraid. And that's okay. It's okay to be afraid. It's normal to be afraid. If you're doing something new, different, big, that's outside what most people are doing in your circle, you're going to be afraid. That's okay. It's okay. But call it what it is. Don't come up with some logical reasons why you shouldn't do something. Just say, I'm afraid. And when you're feeling that fear, it's not be fearless. It's feel the fear and do it anyway. Everything great in your life is on the other side of that fear. Everything great in your life is on the other side of your greatest fears. So let's step into it together and see what magic we can create. So how do you do it? How do you step into the fear? I'm going to give you three ways to do it. Way number one is have an environment for excellence. You are a product of your environment. And yes, you were born into an environment, but now you get to create, you get to build your own environment. And it starts with what's on your walls. Like, where are you working? What's the physical environment that you're in? These people all mean something around belief to me. These people, I set this up once and I get inspired every time I walk into my office. So it starts with your physical environment and then goes to the clothes you wear, expression, right? Like, why am I wearing this ET shirt or where I'm wearing my Believe shirts? I feel like I'm Batman and I'm a superhero going to work off on an important mission. How are you expressing yourself? It goes to the videos that you're watching. What's your daily habit? Do you turn on one of my videos and get Believe in the morning? Do you turn on one of ET's videos and get more courageous in the morning? Like, what are you doing on a daily? It's not about doing one thing that you feel courageous about and then you fall back down to normal. It's the daily. It's what you are feeding your head with. It's what you're looking at on a every single day day basis that starts to shift you every single day, ever so slightly, it shifts you. It makes you more bold. It makes you more confident. It makes you more courageous. It makes you more willing to step into your fear. If you are around people, even if it's just through video format, if you are around people, you're watching videos of people who are doing courageous things, of people who are tackling their fears, I guarantee you, if you did that every day, I guarantee you, you will be more willing on a daily to take small, little, courageous steps forward and face your fears too. So set up your environment, have an environment of excellence. 
Way number two is soar with mentors. The more you have somebody actually in your face, in your life, who is pushing you forward, it's gonna help you move, right? My agent was the guy who said, Evan, you're thinking small. I went to the coffee shop in New York. I did a meetup event. I had 50 people or so come out. We packed the place. It was amazing. It's easy to, I left there feeling amazing. Like, this is great. Holy cow, look, all these people showed up. What an amazing evening with all these entrepreneurs. And then, <laughs> and then I go to have dinner with my agent and he kicks my ass. You know, he says, this sucks. Like you're, you're thinking small. You're just afraid you should be doing something bigger. And so having people around you in your life who are mentors for you, who allow you to soar, soar with your mentors is really important. And the key to getting a mentor is not to go up to somebody and say, Hey, will you be my mentor? It's ask for one piece of advice, ask for one piece of advice, and then go and do that work. My agent gave me a piece of advice. You should be doing this as a paid tour. I don't want to do a paid tour. It's scary and crazy. Okay, that's the advice. I'm going to do it. Don't go to a mentor, ask for advice, not take the answer, and then go ask another question. That's the ultimate disrespect to the mentors. And so that's why people mostly don't have mentors because you're asking wrong. You're going in asking, will you be my mentor? Which they don't, they don't want to jump into that relationship. And two, you ask for help on a question. They give you advice and you don't do the work on that thing. They don't want to help you anymore. Mentors, the good ones, give you difficult tasks. That's their job. That's their role. Their role is to push you forward to where you need to be. And so when they give you something, you go off and do it. Soar with mentors. And way number three is commit immediately. Commit immediately. As soon as you get an idea, as soon as you say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do my paid tour. I'm going to do that scary thing. I'm going to make a YouTube video. I'm going to whatever the case is for your life. As soon as you commit to it, Immediate action. As soon as you say, I'm going to do this, book it right away. For me, as soon as I said, I'm going to book my tour. Great. I went home and I started emailing people on my team. Here's what we're doing, guys. And you're committing, especially if you commit to somebody else. The immediate action isn't, I'm going to go and start researching venues. That's okay, but it's easy to wake up the next day and that motivation is gone. And then all you see is the fear in front of you again. And so when you commit to other people, you're way more likely to follow through and actually do the thing. So as soon as you get that idea, as soon as you recognize that it's not just logic talking, but it's deep down actually your fear talking to you and you know the thing that you have to do is walk right into that fear, look it straight in the face and keep marching forward. As soon as you've made that commitment, then take immediate action and commit to somebody else and say, here is my plan. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till next week. Don't wait till January. January 1st, arbitrary day. Don't wait then. Now, immediately, action, commit to somebody else. So have an environment of excellence, soar with mentors, and commit immediately so that you can push through that fear and recognize your greatness on the other side. Now, I've got a really special bonus clip that I think you're going to enjoy. But before that, it's time for question of the day. I want to know, what do you want to fight for? Let me know. Put in the comments below. You know, I've been with you for a long way. I, I, the one moment that stands out out of, we've done, I don't know how many done, we've done, what, 800 events. Mm -hmm. The one time was 4 a.m. We yeah. went out to practice at 4 a.m. And that was your idea to do it. But, and I then, mean, you know, all these Nike people are like, no, 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 no let's, not, let's not do that. And then you're like, let's do it at 4 a.m. So you got security, you got brand marketing, sports marketing, going, no, 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 let's not do it. You're like, let's do it. Because that's your sustenance. Right. I mean, it, it, to me, it just makes complete sense. Not to us. But I don't, like, <laughs> okay, so. See, we, all right. uh, what you, usually, I'm sleeping at 4 a.m. You're, yeah. you're working out. So well, talk about that. Okay, so if, if, if your job is to try to be the best basketball player you can be, mm -hmm. right? To do that, you have to practice, you have to train, right? You want to train as much as you can, as often as you can. So if you get up at 10 in the morning, train at 11, Right? 12, say 12, train at 12, train for two hours, 12 to two. Um, you have to let your body recover. So you eat, recover, whatever. You get back out, you train, start training again at six. Train from six to eight, right? And now you go home, you shower, you eat dinner, you go to bed, you wake up, you do it again, right? Those are two sessions, right? Now imagine you wake up at three, you train at four. You go four to six, come home, breakfast, relax, so, so, blah, blah, blah. Now you're back at it again, nine to 11. Right? You relax, and now all of a sudden you're back at it again, two to four, and now you're back at it again, you know, seven to nine. Look how much more training I have done by simply starting at four. Right? And so now you do that, and as the years go on, 
the separation that you have with your competitors and your peers just grows larger and larger and larger and larger and larger. And by year five or six, it doesn't matter how, what kind of work they do in the summer, they're never going to catch up because they're five years behind. <laughs> right? So it makes sense to get up and start your day early because you can get more work in. Is that genetic? Or is that something you, you ingrained and trained yourself? No, it was Who just... taught you that? For me, it was just, it was just common sense. Like, I can, I can, if I start earlier, I can train more hours. And I know the other guys aren't doing it because I know what their training schedule is. Right? So I know if I do this consistently over time, it's, it, the gap's just going to widen and widen and widen and widen and widen, and they won't be able to get that back. How do you develop that? Or where do you, where do you learn that from? Well, I, I think it's just, you know, it's just a matter of what's important to you. Mm -hmm. And what's important to you, for, for whatever reason, you know, I, I felt like um, I didn't feel good about myself if I wasn't doing everything I could to be the best version of myself. Mm -hmm. If I felt like I left anything on the table, um, it would eat away at me. I wouldn't be able to look myself in the mirror. Right? So the reason why I can retire now and be completely comfortable about it because I know that I've done everything I could to be the best basketball player I could be. Mm -hmm. If you want to learn how to activate your beast mode like Eric Thomas, check out the video link right next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. The DNA of your success is in your routine. You're not as deep as you think you are. You got to find a routine. I'm getting up at three and stick with it. I'm getting up at five and stick with it.